This is the second part of our screencast on making a curve fit to the thermistor calibration data. We're presenting this in two parts. The first part involved reading the data into MATLAB, computing histograms, and verifying that all the measurements were good. In this second part, we're going to use least squares curve fitting to fit the data to functions that we can then use in the Arduino control code that allows us to control the temperature of the fish tank. The result of the histogram screencast showed that we had some good data and program, thermistor histograms, the MATLAB program, produced this table. We're going to use the first two columns, temperature, which was the temperature at which the calibration data was recorded, and mean V, which is the mean of the analog reading uh, for several readings, hundreds of readings actually, at each of the temperatures. So given those first two columns, the next step is to create curve fits between T and the mean of V. The calibration process as it unfolded was to vary temperature, that is make a mixture of water at different temperatures and measures the output of the voltage divider. So it would seem that the independent variable is T and the dependent variable is V. So equation one suggests that we should make a curve fit of V as a function of T, uh, shown here as a polynomial. However, to control the temperature of the fish tank, we really need temperature as some other function, we'll call it G, of the analog readings. For both of these equations, V could, could literally be a voltage measured at the output of the voltage divider, or we could choose V to be the 10-bit value that's returned by the analog read function during the calibration measurements. Since we're going to be controlling the fish tank with readings on the Arduino, we might as well leave V in the 10-bit raw analog input values. So we just need to be mindful of which units we're working with. There's some subtle differences that won't be a problem for us today. First, we're going to do the forward curve fit, which is just fitting the data as if the purpose was to measure voltage as a function of temperature. Here's a plot on the right that was created with this command plot vav, comma, t, comma, circles. And we have already stored vav, meaning that's the average reading at each of the temperatures. So there's a vector of values vav and a vector of temperatures t. Using the polyfit command, we can create a polynomial curve fit. And for demonstration purposes, and in fact, for the actual calibration, a quadratic seems to work pretty well. So the following commands, c equal polyfit t vav2, that command executes a least squares curve fit and stores the results, the coefficients, in a vector c. And the fprintf commands there print those values out to the screen. We're showing here MATLAB commands, just sort of isolated. Later, we'll present an entire MATLAB function that does all these computations. For our purpose of exposition here, we're going to break it down into individual commands and uh, groups of commands. Polyfit returns the coefficients of the least squares fit in a vector called c. And we are going to use polyval, the corresponding function, to evaluate that polynomial with the coefficient stored in C. And the result is shown to the right. The circles are the data, and the red dashed lines are the degree to polynomial curve fit. To make this, the curve smooth, we're going to generate another set of vectors, T fit and V fit. T fit is the independent variable for this particular forward curve fit. And we use the linspace command to generate a vector of 100 values between the minimum value of t, t is a vector, so the smallest element of t and the largest element of t, wherever those are in the list. And then with that vector t fit, we use polyval and the coefficients stored in c to generate vector of corresponding v values. And then we plot with the plot command here. We want to go a little bit further though. The plot certainly looks very good and we want to come up with some quantitative measures of the quality of the fit. So R squared uh, coefficient is often used and we're going to do that. But first we're going to look at something called the residual. The residual, in this context anyway, is the difference between the given data, Y sub I, and the curve fit, which we have designated Y hat sub I. X, I, Y, I are the measured data, the input to the curve fit function, and Y hat I is the curve fit evaluated at the given X, I. So you can see that from the plot here. So suppose we have some data, and those are the big purple circles, 
we have a curve fit, which is this smooth function that passes sort of near those values. And there is a vertical distance at each of the data points, the vertical distance being the red bar, which is the difference between the given data and the curve fit evaluated at the x for that data. So r sub i is yi, the given data, minus y hat, which is the curve fit evaluated at xi. We're going to keep that residual in mind. r squared st statistic is often cited as a measurement of goodness of fit, and that value ranges between 0 and 1. If y hat is the fit function, again, same as before, uh, evaluated the known data points xi, then we're going to use that y hat uh, to calculate r squared. And then as a reminder, if the curve fit function was linear and xi was the data point, then c1 xi plus c2 would be the values of y hat i. And for our quadratic function, it would be c1 xi squared plus c2 xi plus c3. Xi is the given data, yi is the given data, y hat i is the fit function evaluated at the xi. So r squared, the formula for r squared is given here. And when r squared is about 1, the fit function is said to be good, it follows the trend of the data. And when r squared is close to 0, the fit is not really any better than approximating the data by its mean. So to just make this linkage a bit more clear, uh, the residuals is this, again, this difference between the input data and the fit function, and it's just algebra to get the r squared in terms of the residuals. Just um, a convenient representation. There's nothing really different here. We're just wanting to relate the two terms. There's a busy slide with some MATLAB code that evaluates the residuals, and then the r squared statistic. r fit, in this case, now remember, v av is the output. So we're fitting v as a function of t. So v av is the output of the voltage divider. Polyval c comma t is the curve fit evaluated at the input temperatures. And r squared is this formula uh, on the following line. And when we print it out, we get r squared of 0.99957, which is really quite good. And the maximum absolute deviation, which is the maximum residual, is 5.5 in the units of v. In this case, since v is, ranges from 0 to 1023, we could say that the maximum deviation is uh, about 5% of the full-scale reading. Now, let's do the reverse curve fit. And reverse here just means we're going to be swapping the meaning of the x and y variables. And the, the result is a function that will be very useful for us in doing the control of the temperature in the fish tank. So we've simply reversed the readings. Now the input is assumed to be the analog reading and the output is the temperature. And the plot shows a similar sort of trend. There's a slight curvature. Again, a polynomial of degree 2 is used and the polyfit function returns um, a vector. And this time we're storing it in the vector b. The vector b is the coefficients of this quadratic. Given the fit coefficients, we can then evaluate that curve fit over this range of v. Lin space generates 100 values between the minimum and the maximum v. T fit is equal to poly fit b. V fit gives us the polynomial evaluated at the v fit values. And once again, the curve fit looks pretty good. The dashed red line comes quite close to the input data. And you might well imagine that some of the variation in the input data is really due to some experimental variability, not any deficiency in the least squares curve fit. Once again, we evaluate the residuals and the r-squared statistic. Uh, the formulas are the same as before. We've just swapped the meaning of the input and the output variables. The preceding code gives us uh, r-squared of 0.995 and a maximum deviation of 0.56 degrees C. Again, the quadratic curve fit uh, looks really good, and the maximum deviation is only 0.6 degrees C, which is really um, acceptable for our purposes. Um, I'm not going to go through this in great detail, but uh, there's code that is available from the class website that embodies all these calculations. The first chunk, it's in three parts here. The first chunk is to load the data and calculate the average of each of the large data sets at each temperature. And then 
in part two of the code. This is all one code, but just fits on the screen better. In this part, we evaluate the curve fits and plot the data, same as in the preceding slides. And in this last part, we evaluate the reverse curve fit. So I urge you to study this code and run it for your data. So in summary, we used MATLAB to analyze the thermistor data. In the first part of the screencast, we did the histograms. We computed histograms and showed that the thermistor readings were really quite well behaved, much more stable and much less variability than the salinity sensors. In this screencast, we did two curve fits, the, what we call the forward and reverse curve fits. For both curve fits, quadratic polynomials seem to do quite a good job. Remember that the numerical values in these slides are for a particular set of data for a particular thermistor with a particular fixed resistor. Please don't just take these values, rather use the codes that we have available for you and redo the analysis for your own data.